Hello everyone, my name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. All right. All right. Welcome to DTM Real Talk. We are just keeping it real. And tonight I have just returned from ministering to a powerful group of women from the Titan shape. And I'm excited. Uh, it went very well. People were blessed. Women were freed and encouraged. And that's the whole idea. So what am I going to talk to you about tonight? I got a clip. I received an email um, with a short clip on it stating that um, they would like for me to talk about fear. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm a face-to-face -face person. I like to talk face-to-face. -face. And let's just talk about fear a little bit. And um, <laughs> oh my glasses, talk about fear a little bit. The pandemic, the pandemic actually did something to me. It allowed me to tap into something I didn't really know that or believe that I was capable of doing, which was this channel. And you would not believe how DTM Real Talk was born. Um, it allowed me, the channel itself allows believers to come on and share their story, uh, where they've been, a little bit of their journey, and how they got to where they are. And just keeping it real about different things that have happened in your life and obstacles, uh, uh, experiences, challenges, and finally victories. That's kind of what the channel was born to do. Um, and so what happened is I'm an evangelism instructor for those of you that don't know that. And what I do is teach believers how to share their faith. 97% of believers don't know how to share their faith. And so I've been doing it over 35 years and I was certified about 16 years ago. And what the certification allowed me to do was to go into places that I ordinarily would not have been able to enter into to be able to minister. So it's been a journey for me. It's been exciting. I've traveled the globe in Africa. I want to go other places, but I haven't been anywhere else except for Africa and have enjoyed every single moment of it and miss it. And so um, anyway, fear, fear. Why did they want me to talk about fear? Because they knew that it was a lot of things in my life that that were coupled with fear and prohibited me from doing those things. One of the things was this channel. I was so scared, y'all. I was so afraid to talk on this channel on YouTube. I'm just keeping it real with you. Matter of fact, when I first started on Facebook sharing, I must have did a clip. I want to say about, I probably did a clip about 27 times. <laughs> Before I really uploaded it, because I was scared, I was afraid to do it. Um, there were so many things that I that I that I did, and afraid to do it. And I always remember the phrase "do it scared." Um, the Bible says there's no temptation such as common to man, but God is faithful and he won't allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. And what that simply means is everybody's gone through something and somebody else has been through what you're already going through or that you're what you're about to go through. And if God allowed it to come upon you or allowed you to be in the midst of it, he knows that you can handle it. So whatever you're going through right now, God knows that you're able to handle it. You might feel like you're not able to handle it, but you're able to handle it. And so anyway, I like to put it like this. We, we're going through, whatever temptation you're going through is going to be proportionate to the strength that God gives us to resist. Yeah, that's the way I like to say it. So anyway, talking about fear. Um, I wrote and published my first book, Scared to Death. And for those of you that know and followed me and supported me, uh, it was so exciting. Um, 
<laughs> the book, the name of the book is Determined to Discover Why. You can find it on Amazon. And I was so scared. I was scared to write it. And what is fear? Why was I afraid? When I tell people I was scared, they say you weren't. I said, yes, I was. I was afraid. Fear is simply, we used to say, is false, uh, uh, false evidence is appearing real. It's actually an experience in your mind, but it triggers a strong physical reaction in your body, if that makes sense. It's like um, an expected outcome that we have, um, that's something we've already concluded that it's going to happen, and it never will. And the emotions that come along with the feeling of fear is just so vivid that your body can react to it, right? We create what's called um, an anticipatory anxiety is what I want to say. And it creates stress. And that can even cause a plethora of things. It could cause illness, a whole bunch of things. So all of us experience some fear in some way. Fear of loss, fear of death, fear of success, and fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. Personally, I experienced a lot of rejection in my adult life. And so um, it kind of built me for it. Uh, my brother used to say armadillo hide. And I felt like I had armadillo hide because of dealing with rejection in my adult life. Until when somebody gave me a compliment, I was very careful. I knew, you know, uh, there was an old preacher that told my brother one time, the perfume, the smell of the perfume is good. Just don't drink it. <laughs> so I learned that early on. I accept the compliments because I know that when somebody is compliment complimenting me for something that I've done or something that they see in me, I recognize that is the gift that God has given me that's on display and they see a little bit of the grace of God. So I appreciate the compliment, but I don't drink it. I don't let it get the best of me. I give the credit to who is due, which is God, my father. And so, yeah, I've experienced a lot of that. So I've already, when fear comes in, into play, You've already um, anticipated or projected in your own heart and mind what the outcome is going to be. And what I read was a survey not long ago that said over 80 percent of what we are afraid of is never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen. And as I recall, beginning this channel, God told me to do DTM Real Talk. I was frightened to death. And here it is, 27 months, guys. It's been 27 months every Sunday at six o'clock that I am on here giving you um, through other stories, through other people's testimonies, um, a little bit of their life in hopes that it would encourage you, inspire you, help you in some way, form or fashion. And I appreciate everybody that's been on because they've done just that. And so anyway, we're talking about fear. Like I said, um, when I first started on Facebook and I was recording stuff, I must have recorded stuff like 27 times before I put the real deal up there. Can anybody relate to that, right? So there's a justifiable fear and there's also an unhealthy fear. And we're going to talk a little bit about the unhealthy fear tonight, okay? Let me share with you a few things about fear, first of all. Fear paralyzes, you guys know that. You, it, it paralyzes the, when you're par paralyzed, when paralysis sets in, you have the loss of ability to move. You can't move. So maybe God has put a book inside of you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe God's put a book inside of you and you, you, you stepped out to write that book, but you haven't been successful or you haven't published it, or you, you've listened to someone that told you that you're not good enough, or maybe you should do it another way, or maybe you should wait or prolong it. You actually are paralyzed. Maybe you need to apologize to somebody and you're afraid because you think that they won't respond the way you want them to respond. And so you're afraid to apologize to them. In actuality, it's not how they respond. It's what you do. You're supposed to be obedient to that spirit inside of you and apologize to them, not thinking about the way they're going to respond because you're afraid. Maybe you see something in a friend, a behavior in a friend, and you know you need to tell them about it because it's hindering them. It's hindering their potential. It's 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 making them appear bad. It's it's damaging their character. It's it's it, it's not good for them. But you didn't tell them. The reason you didn't tell them because you're afraid. 
you're afraid. They may not even respond the way you expect them to respond. They may receive you, but fear is dangerous. It paralyzes you guys. And many of you, as I was, was paralyzed because of fear. Number two, number one, fear paralyzes. Number two, fear can stop you from becoming the best version of yourself. Trust me. Fear can stop you from becoming the best version of yourself. Why? Because you really don't believe the grace of God inside of you. You really have trouble believing that you can accomplish the dreams that God has put in your spirit. You don't believe that. So you become paralyzed. Yeah. You possess the gift that nobody else has been gifted to do. God has given that gift to you and it's specifically for you to accomplish, but you're afraid. Somebody needs your assistance and you haven't helped them because you were afraid. Why? Your hands are tight. You, you won't open your hands and they're tight. Why? Because you're afraid. You, you haven't gotten tired. I guess you could say uh, sick and tired of being tired, right? You're not hurting bad enough. You're not able to be free enough because you're paralyzed with fear, right? Fear is, is it's, it's bad, y'all. It's really, 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 really bad. My life, your life consists of so much pain that God wants to use that pain as healing salve for others. God wants to use that pain that you've experienced as healing salve for others. And fear could stop you from doing that. It really can. Fear can stop you from becoming who you were called to be. It could stop you from pursuing what's most important in your life. It could stop you from reaching your destiny. Destiny. It could stop you from feeling from fulfilling your purpose. It really can. I'm getting excited, y'all. I'm sorry. So the question was to me, how did I handle fear? I'll tell you how I handled fear. How did I defeat fear? Am I afraid now? in certain situations that I am in or that I get in sometimes. Yeah, I am. But the first thing that I do is I recognize what is it going to cost me not to follow through with whatever it is I'm afraid of. Let me repeat that. What is it going to cost me? What is it going to cost me to not follow through with what I'm afraid of? That's what I have to do. I have to think about that. What is it going to cost you? to not follow through with what you're afraid of. Remember the phrase, do it scared. The second thing that you have to do when you deal with fear, which is what I did, you have to decide, you have to decide, is this the place you want to remain in? Is this where you want to be? Is this where you want to stay? Is this what you want your future to look like by not pursuing what you know is in your spirit, deep down in your gut? Is this what you want? What what do you want it to look like? Is this what you want it to look like? You have to decide that. You have to decide. I heard somebody say uh, once before, um, wish, a wish makes a life colorful. A dream makes a life motivated. And a goal makes a life purposeful. You have to decide what you want to do and make a commitment to accomplishing your goal. How do you do that? Write it down, create strategized steps to reach it and activate. You got to do something. You can't just think about what you want to do. The Bible says that write the vision down and make it plain. You have to write it down. I asked a guy asked me the other day, how did we, um, cause we went on a trip and he said, how did you guys do that? Um, how did you get it all together? Cause it was such an amazing trip. But I said, it was a, it was a group of men group that wanted to do the same thing that we did. And I said, well, the first thing you need to do is decide why you want to do this. You need to write down, why do you want to go on this trip? And the second thing you need to do is write down, what do you expect to accomplish while you're on it? What do you expect to accomplish when you're done with it? So those are the two things you need to decide. You have to decide, do I want to stay here in this spot in my life? What is it that I need to be doing? 
Where is it that I need to be going? Who is it that I need to become? You have to decide that. And then you go before God in prayer and you ask him to help you. And sometimes he sends people, people like me, people like lots of folks that I know that can encourage you, that can get you on the right track with your goals, with your vision, um, that can walk you through, can hold you accountable, things like that. You see, because fear will cripple you. It's a form of pride, you know. Fear will cripple you and pride is ugly, okay? <laughs> pride is ugly. So once again, we're talking about fear, unhealthy fear that paralyzes you. And so what I'm going to say to you guys, recognize what's costing you. Decide if you want to remain in that spot. Ask God to help you. And he'll lead you to somebody to help you get on the right track. And remember this, only free men can free men. Only free men can free men. Before you can bring healing to somebody else, physician, heal yourself. This is DTM Real Talk, and we're just keeping it real. And we'll see y'all next week. DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe while you're there.